Hey, this is Jeremy from Nox3 Tutorials. In Nox3, there's an extensive directory, right? And we're gonna talk about the directory structure of Nox3. Now, it can be quite intimidating when you're just starting off because you see all these directories, but when you're just starting off, you really don't have this many directories, but it's pretty simple. And we're just gonna go through the list of what the folders or directories, what they do, right? So this dot Nox here, and you, you can actually find this information on the Nuxt uh, website itself. So the way this works, right, is that the .nuxt is the directory in development to generate your view application. This is automatically generated so you don't have to touch it or do anything with it, so don't mess with it. The same thing with this. This dot .output is the directory when building your application for production. So yeah, don't touch the files in here when you run Nuxt build, this is where uh, the directory, your Nuxt application goes. Uh, the assets folder is where you add all your website assets that the build to will process. Nuxt3 uses VIT and not uh, Webpack. So your style sheets, your phones, and your I images that are not served in the public folder. So let's say we go here. Now, uh, let me see if I'm in the right place. Yeah, here. So I have assets here and I have all these directories, links to styles. So these styles, these are the styles of the whole, um, for the whole application right here in assets. Then we have components, a pretty important uh, directory. This, this is where all your components go. So as you can see, I have several Nux3 components here. And this is where all your components go. And uh, they're automatically imported into your Nux application. So you don't have to import them. Uh, you don't have to write any import uh, st st statement down here to import. All this, this importing here, this uh, we're importing um, some types because we're using TypeScript. Also importing, uh, this is like, um, like a Nux module. All right, the next one is the composables. And let me see if I'm skipping anything, no. So the composables, here it says, Nux uses the composable directory to automatically import your two composables into your application using auto imports. But like, what is a composable? A composable really is just a function that you can use throughout your Nux application. That's all it is, you know. So I have, um, two composables here. They have several functions which you can call from any place in your Nuxt application. And so this is what, what your composables does. This I am folder directory, this is not from Nuxt. This is just a directory that I created, which does whatever uh, we we do here. This is for identity and authentication, you know. All right, so we have also layouts here, but let's see if we're skipping something else. So we have content. Um, content, I've never used it before, I don't think, not in Nux3. Uh, it reads the content directory in your project and parses. Uh, this is Markdown, YAML, and CSV and JSON. This is like if you're building a content management system like, or if your Nux application has a lot of content. I've never used it myself. And I believe Nuxt uh, has a module for content called Nuxt Content, I believe. All right, your layout. Your layout is actually the, you see how we have something like this on, on top here? So your, your layout is something like that. Let me try to see if I can um, look at the picture here. If I go to localhost, I think I'm running an app. So let's say here, right, like this is a layout here. As you can see, we have this doesn't change. Do you see that? So this here is is a layout. And if we take a look at the code, uh, this is the default layout. So you have this navbar, you have this dashboard header, then you have this slot. This is where the app goes. When we examine the app, um, the main app right there. We have this layout which covers the app. So that, that's how layouts work in Nux3. 
All right, so the next part, this is the node modules. The node modules are the, um, all the different programs, applications that you download from NPM that we need to make Nuxt work. You know, so we have all, all, all these here and whatever NPM modules, uh, which are just like programs, you know, functions that you can add to make your application work, they're gonna go here. So we really don't touch this node modules, you know, full uh, directory at all. Okay, so right there, node module. Oh yeah, the middleware and the modules too. The middleware uh, next provides customizable root middleware framework so you can use throughout your application. So what what the middleware does, we don't have one here because we don't need to use it. The middleware is actually whenever you go from route to route like this. See, I'm going to sample, and then I'm going to next I am, and then I'm going to home, all this. So before we go from one page to another, right, we go through middleware. So if you want to do something before you move from one page to another, you can put that function in the middleware. That's why that um, middleware exists. Like authentication, I, I tried to do that before, but because the authentication that I created for this app actually like it goes into the back end and for some reason it's it doesn't quite work on the front end as well i think because we have to wait for the, for the database to check the cookies and stuff like that and uh so it doesn't really work work very well you know so but maybe i was doing something wrong so that, that that's what the middleware is for um and then uh let's go here the modules Nuxt comes with its uh, modules that if I think if you create your own modules, they would go there. I haven't done that yet, um, so that's where that's what the module is for. Pages Pages is a pretty important directory, and we have several pages here. So when you go, when you look at this right here, each of these is a particular page. So the way this works is we have pages and you see here we have contact index protected sample and these are the pages that you're seeing right here so the pages uh directory contains all your nux three pages and they're on the front end yeah on the front end and that's pretty much it the plugins this is uh a, a directory where you add uh, your Nux3 plugin. Now, what is a plugin? A plugin is essentially like a, a function or code that you can add to your Nux app. Here's an example plugin here, right? So this is we import from DayJS, uh, which is a tool for manipulating dates and working with uh, dates. And so the way you, you write your, your plugin is like this. So this is a Nux app, your application, and then Today we get today's date and then we say next app dot today today. So this function is plugged into the next application right here. And we can see how it's working, I think, um, on the sample. Is this here? No, it's here. So this comes from the plugin. So that's that plugin that we used here. Okay. Uh, let me look at the directories here. Then we have public. Public directories it directly serve at the root contains public files that have to be that have to keep their names robots.txt so this is a little bit like assets but i think it's not built so things like your fabicon you know the little icon like that would go there in your um next uh three public folder i'm not using one here all right and then um I'm using Prisma. Prisma is not a Nux3 directory. It's because we're using Prisma, which is an, an ORM, an object relational mapper, which helps us work with databases. So this is not a, a Nux3 directory. Server is a quite important directory. This is a Nux3 directory as well. And a server uh, is actually what ha holds your, your backend uh, for Nux3. So it allows you to create your API and your middleware Middleware is a Nux3 
uh, directory which goes in, into server the middleware is like the middleware for the front end this middleware up here will, will be for the front end but this one is for the server so when you're say you access a route in this back end like an api endpoint you would uh before we get to that we'd go through the middleware so whatever like here I have an authentication middleware here, right? So it just checks like uh, what your, whatever routes you're trying to get to, we're gonna check if it needs authentication, you know? So we go through this stuff here to make sure that we are authenticated. So that's what um, the middleware does. And I have several mid middleware here, like for, for logs, we are just, you know, checking every um, request, Quest, as you can see here, right? We're checking all these things, you know, so all this stuff. Um, yeah, so server, if you go to the next, they tell you that server has three directories in it. There's API, there's routes, and there's middleware. And each uh, function, so API is, you know, like, like, like an API. Nux3 can be used to build an API. It's, it's not that, that hard. Middleware, we talked about it. And then routes is it's like like the way websites used to work in the past you know where the routes are on the server yeah something like that all right and then utils i've never used this before but it's nux three users utils directory it's automatically import helper functions so if you need like helper functions you can place them in utils i created a helper helper functions um here uh, but maybe I should have done it on the front end. I don't know. I mean here I don't know if this will work for both like the front end and the back end like Can you have node code here? I don't know yet You know, so I don't know if it's both like front end or just for the back end or both And then dot env. It's a pretty important file. So um, This is where you keep all your So I have a dot env example here because this one has like real you know um environment variables in it but so dot env is it looks like like this but dot env is where you keep like all your um uh variables that you need to use throughout your applications but they're secret variables and you don't want to share them when you share to say like um github you know so this is where we have like our database url access tokens for authentication i know that uh, this can be ch changed easily you know uh public url uh, email and stuff like that so that's what your dot env is for now um let me see what the directory says here uh so you have git ignore which is where you want to put um all the directories and files that you don't want to uh get to send to a github or to monitor you know so like dot env definitely wants to be there you know all right and then uh there's next ignore here which i don't use let's ignore layouts pages during the build phase okay subject to some specifications again ignore okay so i've never used this before but i guess it can ignore some of the um some directories that you don't need to build during the build phase i think it'll make it build faster maybe all right and then we have the app uh app dot view is actually your next application itself um but before that there's app com config uh next we provide an app config file to expose reactive configuration with your application with the application time oh that's pretty nice i've never used this before that's new to me all right so it's app config uh reactive configuration cool then there's app dot view this is where this is the main component of your next three application and so uh we use next page here because we're using like multiple pa pages but if all you have is like one thing then it's just like one single page app all right and then uh we have error dot view here but this is um not part of it's not really like 
uh, well, error.view, if you have like a 404 error and if you have error.view here, next will show this page instead of your 404, which can actually help. So for example, if I'm here and then I go to a page that, that doesn't, doesn't exist, instead of your standard 404 error, you will have this, which I think looks pretty nice and you can customize it, you know, any way that you want. All right. So uh, moving along here, you have your um, Nuxt config. This allows you to, uh, we can connect to the .env uh, file from here. So all those .env uh, variables here, we can link them to here. And then we, from here, we can connect them to the different parts of Nuxt. This is what the Nuxt config, and it does like modules and stuff. This is a pretty, important uh, uh, file here and then um, then you have your package.json which is where it, it lists all your dependencies and uh, scripts so you don't really mess with this you know unless you want to like change you know the um, uh, the name of your package for npm <gasps> All right, uh, excuse me. Read me. Uh, you don't. That's not part of Nuxt. Then you have the TS config. Nuxt automatically generated TS config file with the resolved aliases you're using in your Nuxt project, as well as with other sensible defaults. Do I have that here? Yeah, I do have that. I know I really had to use this. Um, you know, and that's really about it. I'm using Yarn, so you have Yarn here. So Nuxt three is designed so that you know, it's a small file and you can add the directories as you want, as you need, but it can be quite intimidating if you don't know like what you're doing. So I hope this video did help. And so if you want to see this, uh, this is a Nuxt 3 like authenticated application. It's completely free to you. It's a full fledged Nuxt 3 app and many people have already uh, checked it out and downloaded it. If you want it, you can have it for free. It's yours, absolutely free. I'll just click the link below this video. If you don't get it, just, you know, get in touch with me. Just send a message down here below this video. So, and that's about it with um, next three um, directories, you know. Hope you like this video. Talk to you soon.